Welcome to Narrowboat that James built. This is now week three of this narrowboat renovation and work is going okay, progress is being made, there's still a lot to do and really the base plate and the exterior is my main priority because I think I'm going to be back in the water in the next week, 10 days, something like that. Yesterday I started scraping away the underneath of the boat but in reality all I did is take off the low hanging fruit, so the bits of rust which were kind of flaking off nice and easily. Today, upon closer inspection, I need to go about it all again. So, let's crack on. And my job today is one that I am not looking forward to. Luckily, it's not raining uh, yet, but I'm gonna spend it all outside and mostly underneath here. And what I need to do is basically start the front and prepare the surface of the steel for blacking. All the big lumps have been scraped off all kind of ended up on the floor so it's quite a lot of it um, but yeah I need to kind of prepare it you see bits like that there and ideally scrape all the way along get all the loose bits off with a hammer and some other bits and pieces and then give it a key and then black it all and then the other thing to do on the outside before she gets dunked back in the water it's just, most of the chime's fine. There's bits like here, where it's all been like chipping off and stuff. Looks like it's only had one coat of blacking on it anyway. So, basically clean up all of this and then goes high up to probably the rubbing strake up there um, because everything above that looks okay. I might, yeah, I'll see how that goes. Um, water line needs a bit of work doing to it so where was that? here we go so that stuff there can just come off kind of grind that back a bit treat it and then put some blacking back on top but you know this is kind of all the way along all this stuff this is just waterline damage uh it's everywhere but it won't that's not hard to take off to be honest with you. there we go that was obviously underneath the old skin fitting which may not have helped so basically do that all the way along some bits are worse than others you got that spot there what's behind that So that's okay. Clean all this up. Where the uh, pits have been filled in, got to grind that back. Just basically clean it up a bit. Uh, one coat of blacking all round. That should be fine. All right, let's get on my back and get cracking. Okay, this is quite a good example where it's not coming off at all. It's a big lump there. Uh, different directions, this will be all right. But it's really hard on the arms. Get the hammer. God, it's coming off, but that's also hard on the arms. There we go. There we go. 
go. Oh my word, there's a lot of this to do. I need knee pads as well. Right. Oh wow. This might take a bit longer than I thought. lying in the mud there, I can't do that. an indication as to how much we've taken off as well. And I can lie down. Oh, I'm too low now. That's that whole area there. So, uh, once again, the hammer is just perfect tool for it. But this is quite a lightweight one, with a couple of pounds, you know, a pound or something, so it's not heavy. But it's killing on the arms. But then anything else would be, you know, upside down with a power tool, holding it like that, with all the dust going that way in my face. That shit. It's all shit. There's no good way to do this. Easy way. Okay. So the way for me to psychologically do this is to do it in strips and then stop. So if I turn this around, Do this trip and stop and have a coffee or something. Yeah. I can't see a solid thing. Okay, it's starting to rain now. Yeah. I'm halfway through. Of this lower bit here, or of this middle bit, halfway, which 
feels pretty good. Mostly the hammer is doing all the work, which is, well, my arms are, I'm knackered. This is absolutely killing. But people are commenting about using a needle gun, which, you know, would help. It'd get, it'd get a lot of, you know, it'd totally clear it all. It means a horrible tool to use. Not that I've ever used it, but everyone here says, oh, you don't want that. Um, but moreover, underneath this stuff here, there's a few pits. And essentially what I'm able to do, doing this process is inch by inch, working in lines, I'm going down, hammering all the rust off, scraping it, and then on some bad areas or areas of worry, I'm going in with a little wild wheel and excavating it all, getting it back to shiny steel and being able to look at what the pit condition is. And there are a few pits, I've probably uncovered maybe seven. Uh, they're really you know, marginal, they're kind of half a mil, so they're kind of nothing at all. But still, it is giving me the opportunity to survey the entire base plate, which is quite good. I'm now thinking though, after kind of cleaning it all off, probably the thing to do is to vac tan it all before I black it. This kind of ultra peace of mind. I had to pay an extra 35 quid to get the mattress taken away. But there we are. Ralph will have a boat in there in the next five minutes. Right, uh, oh, back underneath the boat again. Oh, this is horrible. Right, it's going quite well. I've taken off quite a lot. Look at all this. And there's loads under the mat. It's all been kind of squidged down but uh, it's going all right you'll see some of the uh, kind of pits here which I've uncovered take it back to quite shiny I mean it looks worse than it is that is less than half a mil uh, that's the worst one that's about a mil maybe not even that and there's really not that many of them Alright, just got the uh, last little bit at the end to do. Quite a lot has come off, that's for sure. So, I've kind of done this whole middle section now. You'll see there are some kind of very smallish pits. Um, I mean, it looks pretty bad on camera still, right on screen, I can see that. That still looks like bumpy as heck. And it is, I mean, bits like that uh, can still come off. So it still needs quite a lot of going at, but it's kind of mostly off. There's another, there's another pit there. Well, 
something which could have been. So taking it back to kind of shiny steel, and it's actually fine, it's kind of less than a mil. And there's another one there. Oops. And kind of a little bit of a patch there, but again, it's just nothing. It's not even, I mean, it's just nothing there. So it's, you know, it's a 10 mil base plate. It's, it's in absolutely fine order. But I'm glad I've kind of properly gone at it. Although I am absolutely knackered now. I've still got this bit here to do above the Vetus. But that doesn't look too bad. I mean, that'll probably all come off in a few smashes. But the base plate, nice and chunky 10 mil base plate. So that's, that's fine. Uh, right, what next? So, well, still got to do loads of this, but I'm not going to do any now because it's killed me. Um, so tomorrow, or maybe later, start grinding all these back get these all half decent kind of do the water line uh do the chime uh that's this bit here sacrificial chime uh so that kind of goes all the way around the boat quite nicely and there's another one up here on the swim um so that will needs a bit of uh, a bit of looking at uh we're gonna get some anodes put on so some slimline anodes I think we're going to go for six on the bottom and two on the sides. So another eight anodes are going to go on the boat. And there's already four on it. So I think we're going to go for 12 in total, which you are going to say is absolute overkill, but it's not. So the ones underneath are vitally important because these ones here on the side, Ralph will tell you and he'll kind of tell you in great detail, but they kind of emit in kind of in a radius. That's kind of how they work, but they don't go underneath the boat. So that one there will kind of communicate with that one that should be there, or maybe even there, another one, kind of two midships and then one aft. And then, but they don't help the base plate. So on the base plate, we'll have two in the bow, maybe two midships and two aft. As I said, slimline ones, they only come out kind of yay deep from there. Uh, again, quite lucky on the Grand Union, it's quite a deep canal. I don't think slow patrols ground out. Maybe, maybe it has once, but you know, in some canals you might not want anodes on the bottom, but that is what I am going for. So yeah, still quite a lot to do externally. And the more I'm thinking about it now, kind of with the effort of putting in on the base plate, I'm thinking it will be prudent to apply Vactan to all of it um, and then black it pretty much like what I've done in the engine build. I think that will be quite prudent to do that. So I'm going to go and take the girls swimming after school today, which would be nice. And I might pass the, uh, where do I have to go to get that? That is Denham Yacht Station, Denham Marina. Yeah, let's go there and get another, what's that going to be? Two litres of Vactan. Right, I'll do that. I'll come back to the boat and maybe do that tomorrow. I'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.